Okay, welcome to episode three, where I'm building a Kitfox 5 right here in my one car garage. Sitting next to me are the wing spars for my right wing. Actually, sorry, left wing. Right wing is up on the wall. Uh, that all went well. It's fully riveted, ready to get out my uh, wing ribs and sand those with the 220 as required. Um, I still have to clean out the inside of these uh, spars here. There's a bunch of chips and everything inside. I'm going to clean them out with acetone, probably do an epoxy slosh of some kind. Haven't made up my mind exactly on that. Um, other things, let's see. On episode one, I mentioned some of the options that came with my kit that I thought it uh, made it a pretty good deal. I still think I got a good deal. Um, the Laker Leading Edge is the one that's going to come into play right here. I also have the one piece uh, windshield skylight option. Um, of course, I'm forgetting all the rest of it, it doesn't really matter. Uh, episode two, I finished off. I had. Uh, had the inserts inside all four wing spars and I had started the process of drilling up um, to recap two holes, top, two holes, bottom, uh, and then you clamp and drill your way out until those extrusions are completely locked in place. It's, uh, I never counted them, 40 rivets at least, and uh, got all that done. Uh, I'll have an image here to put over the top of my face where it shows the inside of the wing spar and the arrangement of the rivets. Uh, sufficient edge margin all around came out pretty good. All four wing spars are done and I'm ready to start the assembly of the wings. There's the fixture set up for the left wing looking at the inboard end of the aft spar half inch spacer block it's up against this index sitting on that surface no spacer block for the forward spar here's my half inch block for washout um, pretty simple uh, I'm just going to play around with some ribs, see kind of what they look like. I've got them out of the box. I'll show you those real quick. These ribs here are the way they come from kit box. This is for the standard uh, Series 7 Super Sport, not the STI wing, which would have a lot more curvature to it. Uh, I am considering the uh, piggyback ribs, which uh, increase the camber on top, but they keep the relatively flat bottom. Um, so now I need to quality inspect these to make sure that the caps are perpendicular to the webs. If there's no staples sticking out, thought I felt one here, just a little splinter. Uh, and then sand them with 220. Um, this is enough for one wing. Got the rest of them in here. Still need to unpackage those. They do seem nicely made. Um, pretty cool getting to move on here. So I've read the manual, both the Series 5 and Series 7. Um, in this case, I'm going to lean a lot on the Series 7 manual. And the reason is. I can see my Series 5 open to the page up there on my bookshelf, and man, they had a lot of options back then. They had uh, wing lockers, where they'd use a six gallon tank, and then uh, some storage space. They have these um, wing tips, where you could have short or long extensions. I'm not doing any of that stuff. Just building a straight up wing like they sell now for the Series 7. Not only do I have Series 7 ribs, uh, and I will be using the aluminum tubes and the stringers, in case you're looking at an older airplane, they used to be wood, like some D-shaped uh, molding like you'd find uh, used in a house. All right, it's my third rib, sanded, ready to go on the shelf. Uh, it's a little dusty, I'll clean them all up at the same time. I've got, looks like six more to go. Too many anyway. Uh, manual has you sand these with 220 before you get going on the assembly and then of course there's the wing spar layout which they haven't yet to do. Um, naively I thought sanding ribs would be similar to sanding the ribs for the vertical fin where I just used my random orbit sander and uh, some 5 inch discs. Went to town, that was a 15 minute job, they came out super smooth, beautiful. Uh, it doesn't work on these at all. First of all the sander wouldn't even fit really even in this hole. and. Uh, represents several more challenges. So this area right here is the one that required the most creative solution. I have somewhere around here a multi-tool uh, multi with the triangular sanding disc. Um, I never even got around to using it. I got a, uh, there it is. 
different attachment for the multi-tool. Uh, this is called finger sander and I was hoping it would get me at least back most of the way to the corners. I got a got this from Amazon. It is complete Chinese crap so don't bother. The sanding pads they give you that go on here they don't even stay on for five seconds so there are some quality ones of those made so don't think that all finger sanders don't work but I couldn't find one at Home Depot or my local locally run home improvement store. So I was on the plan B. I have uh, had this for a while. This is one of those rubber tacos, is what my body shop called them, uh, that you can stick a five inch disc, six, six inch disc to. And then I came home and I got some of my pink foam and hot wire cutter and started making shapes. I used a, I should probably introduce this piece here first. This is uh, this crude approximation, it is uh, my first attempt at hot wire cutting foam. I just had a bunch of this pink foam laying around. I thought I'd make this mandrel that I could support the rib so that I'm not putting any load on these cap strips and I uh, can hold it. I could clamp it if I had to, but so far so good. And of course it's two-sided, so I sand one side of the rib, flip it over, and go to town on the other side. And then I used, let's get back to this part, I just used the cardboard template I made on this uh, to make this sanding block which I was quite confident would get me all the way back in the tail of the ribs, and it does, so that's great. And then it takes two more sanding blocks because I made this, uh, well, let's start with this one. I thought this would carry me through most of the rest of it, but as you can see, the uh, truss holes in here make it so that this um, doesn't work except for bridging the gap between where the little corner one leaves off and up to around here somewhere. So this is what I use this one for, and then again up at this end, and then the big round one gets me through most of the center section. So between my rubber taco, which I use for the outsides of the cap strips, uh, the edges of the cap strips, and also the inside of the cap strips, and these other three improvised sanding blocks, uh, I'm now in work getting these done. This morning as I was planning my work out here, I knew I was going to be doing a lot of sanding, but I also finally got the rubber balls I was waiting for so I could slosh out the inside of the spars and then I had this face palm moment when I realized epoxy coating the inside of the spars right now is not the right time and the reason is because ideally you would do the epoxy coating after you're done with all your drilling and riveting and I'm a long ways from that because doing the wing strut attach fittings themselves are just counted real quick I think 42 holes each then there are the drag anti-drag um, tubes which go in there those all have fittings with off the top of my head six eight rivets a piece and then once the wings are framed up I have to drill the inboard ends where they attach to the fuselage and there's some steel doublers which go in there and those are riveted and high sold and you would not want to have epoxy in the way for that which really means the best time to do the epoxy coating is the same time as the people who are building Model 7 airplanes right now, and that is with a completely framed up wing, and that's going to be a two-person job for sure. So I was hoping to do this as a single person, slosh them out right now and go. It would still be better than nothing, but I don't have nothing. I have the Aladine inside, and so I'm still on the fence about that. But what I do know is that right now is not the time to slosh them out. So I'm going to keep sanding on these ribs, get them ready to go. I've got, can't quite see them, six more, five more to go and then I'll be back to laying out those bars, getting them in place. I got a brand new set of fine point sharpie pens so I could lay out those rib locations and start planning my strategy for getting the ribs bonded in place and working on those drag anti-drag fittings. I'm probably going to finish up this particular episode here. It's dragged on for a ways and then I'm going to do the next episode which is at this point going to be episode 5 since I dropped 4 last night out of sequence uh, about my instrument panel. So uh, fair warning, if you're not into the MGL avionics, skip that one entirely. Uh, anyway, so my next video for the wing build is going to be laying out the wing spars, getting the ribs in place, uh, getting ready to high saw, so I think that probably is going to be an important video. It's important for me anyway, and I think that's the one for those of us who are building wings up from scratch. Uh, I could probably use some help, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.